Can you maybe do some more shading and the gradation on the pens right here? For over five years, a community of 7th and 8th graders from William McKinley Intermediate School have been putting in volunteer hours for no school credit whatsoever working on a wall. You come in in the morning and for as far as the eye can see, you have kids lined up and tables and, you know, who's drinking hot chocolate, who's eating bagels, who's uh, kidding around with the teachers and building rapports. Inside these empty halls, and as far as the eye can see, is a collection of themes incorporating Renaissance art, cult movies, and Greek mythology. Behind the curtains is a Michelangelo painting about in the Sistine Chapel, the two fingers touching the creation of Adam. The idea began in 2006 with a small magnet of a Norman Rockwell illustration of Rosie the Riveter. There was something about the position of the Rosie the Riveter figure on that magnet that piqued my curiosity and it bothered me. I'd seen it somewhere before. It was similar to a facial image from the Sistine Chapel and a lesson plan developed on how artists are inspired from each other. Then their teacher took it a step further. They're visual. These kids are 100% visual. They learn more through their eyes and you see that in their response to artwork. It was called the Fountain of Knowledge so we put it right on top of the fountain so we can incorporate it together. The first year lesson was an art deco project incorporating elements from the movie Metropolis, Frankenstein, and the influences of art deco. We used books to research it so we could see what colors were mostly shown in the 1930s and 1920s. You have Metropolis, which is futuristic, which is very much about technology, which is what we're about now. And it's very funny that it's parallel to Frankenstein, you know, which is very archaic. And the kids look at these parallels. It was never supposed to be more than a one-year project, but students wanted it to continue. And the principal found the funding for the paints and construction tools. Extended for the second year, the theme concentrated on the 1930s. We were actually inspired by George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. Brooklyn boy, George. So that hand belongs to George Gershwin. And the musical notes, it's, it's the beginning of the Rhapsody in Blue. There's a lot of art deco. The decorations, uh, the papyrus element that's taken from the Chrysler building. This was based on the Firebird and the Winter. This is the Waldorf Astoria, a lot of different characters. And the poetry is the best thing about it. It's so spontaneous and it's easy to read and it's fun to look at. The mural is a motivational tool for both teachers and students. There are times and portions of the day where teachers actually come out in the hallway for social studies or for science and you have the kids lined up and they're looking at certain things and you know there's math up here with, with, with part of the galaxy in their Sistine Chapel. The mural has over 600 poems, covers two floors, and runs over 1,500 feet in plywood alone. This is the first piece I ever worked on my first day here. The kids take pride in their work. I have put that there. I mostly worked on the people. I did the Art Deco straight angle design on the boat. This took me about uh, four, five months to do. We felt that this kind of project, where it would be one-on-one -on -one with a teacher, with other kids, we felt that those kids would benefit from that. Part of the deal is, you have to behave in class, otherwise you get fired. This young lady is doing the gradation on the, on the draper inside there. The theme for the 2011 curriculum will still incorporate Renaissance art, but this year is extra special. We found that the vast majority of these kids know absolutely nothing about 9-11. They don't know anything of the human element. They don't know about the courage of those first responders who sacrificed their lives going into those buildings. They don't know anything about the untold stories that you or I will never hear. And it's in that human connection that the greatness of the story lies. These kids should know that. The kids will begin the sketches and start the acrylic painting in the fall. It will be during that time that the 9-11 families and survivors will be asked to come and paint with the children and tell their stories. This school is everything that a community should be. It's about self-expression. It's about kids not being afraid to ask questions to teachers. These kids are coming out of their shells and, and communicating on levels that are preparing them for the outside world. For me, the greatest inspiration if a child, a young artist or a young poet is going to create a work of art that they're going to remember for the rest of their life, that's the great inspiration for me. That means I did my job.